I smoked from the time I was eight. <gasps> no, you weren't eight. <laughs> Not eight. I used to walk down the street and pick up cigarette butts and smoke them. Are when you were eight? Serious? When I was eight, from the time I was eight until Wait, I'm I was sorry. twelve. I, like, my sonny's stepson is eight years old, and I cannot even imagine that. So I used to, I don't know why. I, I, don't, I was the only one in my gang that did it, who did it. And uh, one of my doctors said to me one day, uh, you, you don't get sick, do you? And I said, no, I don't. I, I'm around people with the flu and... COVID and you know what everything else, and I never catch anything. I never get sick. I never get a cold or a cough. I have nothing. Why? He's well. He he wondered why too. Oh, okay. I have an idea. It's because I used to pick up all those cigarette yeah. butts, and I was taking in the what do you call it? Like all of the immune yeah, system the germ, germs, the, the germs from everybody. Are, yeah. Right. So, huh? That's well, so funny. Give your children cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, give off them the, the butts. ground. Butts. Yeah, yeah, give them the butts off put the them ground. Out, yeah, put them on the... You know what? You don't see cigarette butts on sidewalks anymore. Not much. Okay. Not much. You don't I don't see, think a lot of people smoke anymore. And you don't see cars on the highway with smoke coming out from under their engines. I thought about that today. Huh. Yeah. And, you know, I was offered a cigarette this weekend. Really? Yeah. And? I took it. I took one puff and then I realized, oh, that's why I don't really do this. <laughs> no, you have. I, I quit smoking. Yeah. yeah. You did quit smoking? Yeah. It's great. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Wow. Isn't that great? Now I need the lip wrinkle cream. Okay. No, no. Lip cream. <laughs> what, what motivated you to quit smoking? I just, uh, there was a, I just all of a sudden one day was like, I don't like this anymore. It was, it was natural. It's really right. great. Yeah. Really yeah, great. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, Me I, too. I'm happy. It I, feels like I can't feel proud of myself because it wasn't something I tried to do, but I'm very happy about it. Well, I quit smoking. Suzanne and I were... Uh, Did Zanny ever smoke? My, she didn't smoke. No, no, never. I was at my parents' house in Toronto with Zanny for, for dinner. Mm -hmm. And after dinner, I pulled out my DeMaurier and lit up a cigarette and my dad said to me, my dad who had never ever asked me to do anything mm -hmm. other than love. And he said, son, I sure wish you would quit smoking. And I said, dad, I will quit smoking if you grow a goatee. <laughs> so I quit smoking and he grew the goatee. I feel like his oh goatee was God. like his iconic look too. Yeah, like when look, I think about Jaja, I think yeah, about a goatee. Yeah. You know, the thing is, it's easier to, to do something for someone you love, oftentimes, than it is to do it for yourself. Like, I never thought when I was smoking that I'd get anything, that some kind of disease or a big problem. It never occurred to me. It occurred to my father, and I was able to quit because I did it for him yeah. mm -hmm. rather than for me. Because mm -hmm. when you're young, you're stupid. I'm sorry, I don't mean that. No, I was sorry, stupid. You are. No, no, no stupid. I was stupid when I was young. Violet, you're stupid? Yep, yeah, yeah. 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 And we're not stupid anymore, are we? Not as much. Okay, not just as have much. a little just bit a little of little stupid bit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for supporting my quitting of smoking. So many people yeah. are like, congratulations. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So, you found these cigarette butts yeah. on the street. Yeah. How did you light them? With matches. Oh, you just went home and did you smoke them at home? Like no, never. Smoke? Are you kidding? <laughs> My mother would have turned me upside down. <laughs> did you keep matches on you? No. No. no I, well, I would have matches. Well, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> yeah, but you, matches were for sale for a, a penny. Oh, okay. they just give them to you. Now they just give out. Now matches. they give it to you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was a pity. I used to sell them on the trains. Yeah. Cigarettes, matches, chocolate bars, chewing gum, peanuts, biscuits, oranges, novelty contraceptives, ham sandwiches, <laughs> so ham and cheese sandwiches, and jewelry. I'll rent you a pillow for 10 cents. I'll rent you a comic book for a nickel. Okay, and Zeta, how old were you when you were doing that? From 13 to 17. That's, Wait, that where, where did the train go you from? You told me the story initially, and I was like blown yeah. away. Where did, where did the train come and go from? I saw all of Canada. <gasps> I did That's Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver. 
We used to stop overnight in Winnipeg, and there was a little uh, a terrible hotel next to the train station. It was $2.50 a night. And to get from your bed to the sink, you had to walk uphill. Oh my God. You know, the floor was like that. And didn't have a shower, didn't have a toilet. You had to go down in the hall, take a shower, or go to the toilet, oh had a God. sink. And you just knew that every guy who stayed in that room peed in the sink. Oh so he didn't use the sink <laughs> either. That's okay. so funny. Yeah. I went to Toronto, Halifax, Nova Scotia. I saw all the eastern provinces. Quebec. Okay. Quebec. Wow. I'm going to show that to your children. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you guys have to start with children, I, okay? Zeta keeps saying we have you to have, to have do children. That. Don't okay, wait too I long. Think, okay, listen. <laughs> listen. Because you we'll want you want me to be to you want me to be and present. Talk to Violet. Pardon? <laughs> you, want, you can talk to Beckett or Violet. It's not going to be me. Well, you never know. I love how his reasoning is because I need to be around. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's not. Well, they're kind of a handful. <laughs> it's kind of a full-time job. No, but Zeta's going to be here. No, you know what? I want to, I'll babysit for you. Oh, really? thank you. Yeah. Will you? <laughs> yeah, I will. I know how to change diapers. Are you going to wow. come down to L.A.? Just like... On the spot? I, I learned how to change them with one hand. It was like... Yeah. And by the way, you know, when I speak to young people about having children, uh, and they all say, uh, when I'm ready... Nobody's ever ready to have children. That's what children. everyone says. Everyone says that, yeah. Everybody says that. Everyone says you're never ready. You, yeah, you're, you're not ready to have children because it changes your life. The first thing you think of is, why did I do this? Okay? Now I can't play golf every day. Yeah. Oh, or I no. can't go to the gym every day. Or everything revolves around the baby. Why did I do this? I was living a really great life. Okay? But... The payoff comes the longer the baby is with you. There are those wonderful periods like I loved uh, my children when they were two years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they were able to, to communicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could run and uh, have fun together and we could have fun together. They were like sort of func functional human beings, which was great. Yeah. And yes, this is, is this is ac actually, what's his name? Uh, Valentino. Valentino. Wait, hold on. Show this, though. Oh, yeah. We have a little pin of Zanny is always inside of all of Zeta's jackets. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. And it's such a cutie one. Yeah. I love this. Uh, one of her Vegas yeah. outfits. So good. Hello, guys. I welcome you to my channel. So recently, a day after Valentine's on 15th of February, Susan Summer's beloved husband, Alan Hamo, went live on Instagram with his granddaughters, Violet and Daisy. During the Instagram live, Alan Hamo spoke about how he started smoking at 8 years old and how he overcame it. Alan Hamo was born on 15th June 1936 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Susan Summers got married to him for 46 years and the couple married in 1977 after nearly a decade of dating. Summers had a son from her marriage to her first husband, Bruce Summers, and also Hemo had children from his marriage to Marilyn Hemo, his first wife. Susan and Hemo met after she worked as a prize model on the game show he hosted called The Anniversary Game, which premiered in 1969. Summers didn't last long on the show. She was let go from the position at the end of her first day for not knowing which camera to look into. In an interview with the Television Academy posted to YouTube in 2010, Susan said, And I went home so dejected, but Alan Hemo, who was the host of that show, had found my phone number on the paperwork. He shouldn't have been reading it, but he found it and called me, and here we are. Alan Hemo went on to become Susan's manager during Humphrey's company days in the late 70s and early 80s. 